and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. Uh, I, uh, I'm not feeling amazing here, friends. I'm not feeling amazing at all. Uh, I was at Vapor Slam in Winston-Salem, North Carolina this last weekend, and you know, it's one of those things that's like shaking people's hands and, and trying juices and oh, all this stuff. And I get home and I just get annihilated with this cold. And thankfully, this is the best it's been so far. The last two days, I was just, <coughs> I was just out of it. I was laying on the couch in my pajamas, like trying to answer emails, trying to answer comments and it was just a bad scene. I was a mess. I was miserable. And I'm not I'm not really like 100% right now. Uh, this vlog will include a lot of sneezing, uh, possibly some coughing. I might go off camera a little bit to blow my nose. It's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to change up my normal vlog routine. Uh, I do have a lot of activism stuff to talk about, a lot of very important activism stuff to talk about. But since I'm feeling under the weather, I'm not going to be drinking any beer. Thankfully, I did shoot some beer footage while I was in North Carolina. That's actually the only footage that I got there. It's the only time I got out my GoPro was when uh, Zach and Joe and I were drinking the Dragon's Milk beer. So hopefully we'll have that in there as well. We have we do have some shout outs to do as well as some first impressions. And I do want to throw in a review for that uh, Freak Show Mini RDA that showed up. It's, uh, it's a fun little atomizer, if not a little spitty backy. But, uh, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to try to move forward. So again, I apologize for the state I am in. But I didn't want to skip this vlog because it's, uh, it's, it's important. There's some important information in here. Um, uh, real quick regarding YouTube comments, um, a lot of people's YouTube comments are getting marked as spam and I have no way to fix that. Uh, there's, <clears throat> when you're uploading videos and you go to like your, uh, you know, your whatever dashboard page, I'm trying to drink a lot of water. When you go to your dashboard page, you can see comments and then you can see marked as spam. And there's a lot in there marked as spam that are may not necessarily be spam, but for some reason they're getting marked as spam. So if you're trying to post a comment on my video that and they're not showing up, then the chances are that YouTube has marked you as spam for some reason. And I have no idea. I have no idea why. I don't know why that uh, I don't know why that happens. Additionally, if you go on my YouTube and you just leave me jackassy comments with like no way for me to reply to you, then your shit's just gonna get deleted because I don't have time to deal with stuff like that. Um, I am not without my flaws. Um, I didn't pronounce Heracles correctly and every other person that commented on the video felt the need to point out that I did not pronounce Heracles correctly. I'm still probably not doing it now. Uh, I'm just a guy. <laughs> I'm just a guy in my office talking about vape. Uh, if I pronounce things wrong or things like that, then you know what? That's it's just a thing that's going to happen. Like I said, I'm just a guy. I don't pronounce things well. Sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. But uh, that's the most un inconsequential thing. And yes, I know the Arctic take comes apart. Mine still does not come apart apart. Maybe I have an older version. I don't know. Mine doesn't come apart. Everybody else's comes apart. So everybody else had to tell me that, oh no, the Arctic tank does come apart. You need to stop spreading lies. I'm like, Jesus Christ, is it detrimental to the vape community as a whole? Did the world stop turning because I said the Arctic tank doesn't come apart? No, of course not. It's a stupid, insignificant little thing. Some come apart, some mine doesn't. Mine just doesn't come apart. Sorry, I'm not in a foul mood on purpose, but I'm very sick and I, I just don't feel well. Um, first thing I want to talk about is Indiana. Um, Indiana is, ah, the, Indiana's going out of control. Um, Let's head over to Kassad.org and uh, I mean Indiana is straight up about to oh come on uh, Indiana is about to straight up just destroy electronic cigarettes and vaping uh, as a whole um, 
Well, it's for, it's today. <laughs> it's Thursday, March 26th. Is today Thursday, March 26th? Yeah, Thursday, March 26th. Vapors and small business owners from across the state will participate in a rally outside the state house in Indianapolis. We need to send a strong signal to the Indiana legislature that HB 1432 and SB 539 are anti-consumer and will harm public health. Uh, even if you've already made a phone call on the matter, we need you to call your state. Indiana State Senator one more time. They need to know that they have a passionate but respectful constituents that truly care about how they vote on this issue. Uh, these are still moving through the Senate floor and the bill uh, is basically written to gut the vapor industry. Um, even if you have previously taken action on this issue, please take a moment to send an email. It's bad. Uh, Indiana is bad 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 things happening in indiana so if you're an indiana vapor um get over there uh call email all this stuff i mean today 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 is literally the last day uh but yeah they're gathering in indiana i I have no doubt that there will be a strong uh there'll be a strong showing um additionally with these fda regulations it's funny because i was uh I was looking on Reddit and someone had brought up uh, uh, we're 60 days uh, away from basically the beginning of the end unless we do something about the FDA. Uh, Just let this, this guy wrote, let this sink in. We are literally within 60 days of the FDA uh, rolling out their deeming regulations, which would ban 99.9% of e-cigs and uh, essentially hand over the electronic cigarette industry to big tobacco. So take action. Building off of that, one thing you can do, uh, <clears throat> this is really more toward California, but California has created a, uh, they're using a lot of taxpayer money, uh, somewhere in the $7 million range to, uh, to advertise on television and promote their own website still blowing smoke. Uh, So a bunch of vapors and California residents got together and created notblowingsmoke.org. And of course, I will post links in the description to to this website as well as their Facebook so you can get active on their social media. But it is uh, basically a retaliation to the still blowing smoke. The still blowing smoke propaganda is terrifying it's kind of creepy it's like uh it's really painting a horrible picture as far as what tobacco harm reduction is and what vaping is it makes us look like we're sneaking into schools like drug dealers and we're giving kids little bottles of juice which is is unbelievable the propaganda is unbelievable so as a response to that i apologize let me turn down my facebook notifications as a response to that uh notblowingsmoke.org has been created. Uh, There's a lot that the California public health isn't telling us about vaping, such as vaping is small business, not big tobacco. A lot of insanely good information. I want to give a shout out to all the, everybody in California that was involved in this. And I don't know exactly all who was involved with it. I saw CJ Vaping Monkey post it first. I saw Cam uh, from Local Vape slash Vape Sirens posting it as well. But this is an insanely good website, and we need to get this out there as much as uh, as much as humanly possible. There's a lot of really good information on here. It's all factual, truthful, the reality of it. Uh, the California Department of Public Health is now protecting cigarettes and threatening the lives of vapors and smokers. Nearly every sentence in the California Department of Health's e-cig report is false or misleading, fear-mongering propaganda. This is just true. That's what Bill Godshaw says. They have it on the website, and it's big. Um, It's funny because if you Google still blowing smoke, like if you saw the the ad on television and you're like, oh, I want to check out that website, and you Google still blowing smoke, the first search result, oh, no. Oh, because I spelled it wrong. Still blowing smoke did you mean will blowing smoke oh they made it an ad oh that's how they beat it 
so for a long time, for a while, for a couple days, uh, not blowing smoke was above the California one. Um, but they used their deep pockets and they, uh, and they bought a sponsored Google ad. So if you Google still blowing smoke, the first thing you see is the, uh, is the ad, which is, uh, oh, which is just great. Thank you so much, California, for using my tax dollars to take vaping uh, away from me. That is ridiculous. But I'm going to post a link in the descriptions to both the uh, the Facebook and the notblowingsmoke.org. Um, they're, they're just great things to stand behind. And uh, the more that we can get these viral, you know what I mean? Obviously, uh <coughs> <coughs> the more we can uh the more we can uh you know educate the public and people need to be educated about this stuff man if i was uh just you know everyday joe not a vapor not a smoker and i was watching television and i see these ads that are like oh god they're giving the vapor to our kids and vape is owned by big tobacco and of course this is a really bad thing and it's all it's all just fear-mongering propaganda. It's really, really bad. And so I'd encourage you to get out there. Post notblowingsmoke.org everywhere you can. Like the Facebook page. Get their numbers up on uh, on Google. Get their, you know, their SEO up so that those are the first uh, search results. Additionally, uh, a guy named Red Zary, <laughs> which I'm not really sure. Mm-mm. Not really sure if that's his real name. Uh, he sent me this that was published in... Uh, March of 2015. So this is a very, very recent thing. So this is from biomedcentral.com. Electronic cigarette use and harm reversal uh, evidence on the lungs. So this is a... (coughs) I apologize for all the coughing. This is a... uh, So this is a published study, basically, uh, talking about... Uh, vaping's effect on the lungs. Uh, it's it's very, very long, but you can kind of scroll down to the conclusions. Uh, compared to combustible cigarettes, vapor products are at least 96% less harmful and may substantially reduce individual risks and population harm. Future research, research will better define and further reduce residual risks from electronic cigarettes used to as low as possible by establishing appropriate quality control and standards. Although large longitudinal studies are warranted to, okay, it goes on and on, uh, 96% less harmful and may substantially reduce individual risk harm. Uh, to me, that is an amazing thing. Um, uh, uh, significant health benefits can be expected in smokers who switch from tobacco to electronic cigarettes. The emerging evidence that uh, electronic cigarettes use use can reverse harm from smoking tobacco should be taken into consider- ta- consideration by regulatory authorities seeking to adopt proportional me- measures for the vapor category. Send this article. Dude, send this article to uh, every lawmaker you can find. Print this out uh, and just give it to them. Take this to Indiana. Give it to them. I mean, this is a peer-reviewed published study on electronic cigarettes. Uh, uh, you know, harm reversal on the lung. They're basically saying that, yeah, if you switch from traditional tobacco to electronic cigarettes, uh, it's 96% less harmful and it can reverse harm done on your lungs uh, previously by tobacco electronic cigarettes can reverse that can reverse that harm and this is a uh, this is huge I mean this is a very cool thing so thank you a uh, red Zary if that is your real name for sending that my way and of course everything I talk about all the links will be in the description to this video um, now would be the time that we're gonna do beer time but uh, I don't have uh, any beer right now because I don't feel like drinking beer because I feel so very, very awful. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do is jump to some video that I shot at uh, uh, Vapor Slam, and then when we get back, we'll do a little bit more uh, talking about Vapor Slam. Okay. We're just doing a little vlogging. Exactly. So we're here at, uh, this is Vape Mania. Vape Mania? No, nope, it's not. It's Vapor Slam. That's right. Vapor Slam 2015, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I'm here with Zach. Uh, 
We're tasting some beer. Yeah, uh, amazing beer. What beer do you through? have? This is uh, Dragon's Milk. Yes. New We're, Holland Brewery out we of both have, uh, We both have Dragon's Milk. Uh, New Holland Brewing, the High Gravity Series. Uh, I don't know anything about this beer other than it's delicious. We just opened them and uh, I've been enjoying it. It looks like a really dark beer. It's very dark. I don't have anything to pour it in, but it looks it it's looks extremely quite dark. it looks quite quite dark. But it's delicious. It tastes like uh, it tastes like an imperial stout. It's really heavy. It's really like uh, like caramely, savory, almost to me. At least that's what yeah. I get from. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to be like a in, uh, oak, oak barrel aged. Yeah. Uh, vanilla stout. Yeah. It yeah. it has some sweetness to it, yeah. which I really like. It's delicious. Here's to you. Mm. Just straight out of the bottle. Yeah. That is really the best way to drink beer. Absolutely. Right out of all, I use all these fancy glasses <laughs> yeah. at home. I'm like, I'm well. using a tulip glass today <laughs> every time. But uh, but no, this is really good. Dragon's milk. I'll post a link in the description to where you can check it out if you're interested. But uh, this comes from Zach. So cheers. cheers. Thank you, Zach, for uh, supplying me with beer. My pleasure. I love this Zach. Been, uh, we love Zach. Joe. Zach is my new best friend. Zach, one of my all-time favorite beers. Dragon's milk. It's delicious. Oh, it's as good as Sweet Baby Jesus last night. It, Sweet Baby Jesus Which is I good. Which I now have to try, thanks to Joe. Oh, it's so it good. Yeah. I did it in a vlog. Uh, it was a couple months ago. Really? It was around Christmas time. I did the Sweet Baby Jesus. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, Dragon's Milk. Check it out, and uh, I guess we'll go back to the normal vlog now. That was me and, and Joe and Zach hanging out by the Namor Juice table at Vapor Slam, uh, drinking some uh, Dragon's Milk uh, beer, which was goo. It was delicious. Uh, I remember Joe had texted me a while ago, and he was telling me about this beer. He's like, dude, you got to try Dragon's Milk. You got to try it. And I'm like, all right. Well, you know, I want to. Obviously, yeah, I want to. And so he... Uh, <clears throat> He kept uh, he kept telling me that he he's like you got to try it you got to try it and so then Zach shows up with some dragon's milk and it was uh, and it was delicious and Zach was a, a really good guy he ended up going out to dinner with all of us and uh, just an all around very very cool dude so thank you so much Zach for the uh, for the beer I've been uh, despite my sickness I've been vaping some three milligram juice uh, and it's it's okay I can vape it without feeling like I'm getting destroyed. If I just take uh if I take shorter little little drags uh with three milligram juice I don't feel like uh I don't feel like I'm going to die and I can still vape I actually went like an entire day without vaping uh and I didn't even think twice about it I just felt so cruddy that I didn't I couldn't I couldn't possibly vape uh so vapor slam Vapor Slam was uh, kind of a great event. It was really, really fun. I do like the meets that that Freeze and Mooch put on, and I most of all I like seeing my friends there. Um, I got to see Flitz again, who's one of my nearest and dearest friends. Um, I got to see the Plumes of Hazard guys again. Shout out to them. You know, uh, Mast, Fu, Understudy, uh, whatever, Brian, Angsty, um, rocking my Plumes of Hazard shirt. They're all just super, super cool, fucking cool, cool guys. And uh, Corey as well, who's a very, very super cool guy. Um, I had a great time, and I got to meet uh, Cheeksy, and she's she's just a wonderful person. She's just fun to hang around, to be around. Um, so shout out definitely to Cheeksy Vapes. Um, but we had a great time. It was uh, it was a great meet. I didn't really get to walk around too much. I managed to get my way down to the to where Twisted was, so I finally got to meet Twisted. Twisted is a super cool, just very, very energetic guy. Uh, I don't know if he was like really overwhelmed. We were all kind of overwhelmed and it was like we would get stuck. Like there was just so many people there that um, regardless of who you are, you would get stuck certain places. Um, I ended up getting stuck in front of the Namor Juice table a lot, but I didn't, like I said, I managed to go down and talk to Twisted. He's a super cool guy. Uh, he was really fun to be around. And Matt, of course, Matt was there. <laughs> in his uh in his waxy glory and i got to hang out with him again and he's such a good guy um we're all going to be up again at the uh well not all of us some of us are going to be up again at uh, the ecc event uh vpx in niagara falls 
Uh, this, not this weekend, but next weekend. That's where we're all going to be. Uh, Matt and Vanessa are going to be there. Ruby Rue's going to be there. I'm really excited to see her again. And hopefully I am feeling just a whole hell of a lot better. Um, I was talking to Matt. And he said he got home and he had a sore throat too. And I'm kind of just, man, I need to bring some hand sanitizer and some, like, uh, my own drip tips and chuff tops because there were so many people that were like, dude, you just try this. Just try it. Just try it. It's cool. I'm not sick. Just try it. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, that was really good. God, I hope that was worth it because now I'm going to get sick and now I got sick. So in the future, no, I will not be trying anything unless I have my own drip tip or my own chuff cap on there. That is ridiculous. That just may, I just, I don't want to get sick. So, Vapor Slam was a really, really spectacular event. They announced Vape Mania, which uh, is going to be in August. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it, but I would really like to make it. Um, what I need to focus on right now is VaporCon West, which is creeping up in July. Getting vendors locked down. We got the hotel locked down. We got the room locked down. We're just getting vendors. And, you know, boring uh, show stuff like insurance, which is, you know, it, there's nothing fun to talk about there. But... Uh, you can always head over to VaporConWest.com for the latest details. Uh, when they do arrive, they will be there first. I do want to give some shout-outs. Um, I want to give a shout-out to Mark. Uh, Mark sent along. So Mark uh, sent along a atomizer for me, uh, some beer, and a calendar, which is very, very cool. Let me get this calendar. I don't have a place to, I don't have a place to put it just yet. But he set along. He goes by Music Matt on uh, on Instagram. That's January. Oh, that's so cool. Let's see what April is, because that's my birthday. April. That's the April coil build. Uh, May is cool. Yeah. Oh, July is cool. August. Maybe I like August the most. But it's like a vaping coil calendar. Uh, he sent this. Uh, he sent this down with Cheeksy and her friend Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Oh, God, if her name's not Cheyenne, I'm going to feel like an asshole. Cheyenne, he sent that down, and he sent me down a uh, an atomizer. It was the Mutation X version 2 with his own, you know, build he did on it. It was a, it's a dual coil fused Clapton. Uh, came in uh, wicked, wicked low, so I've been rocking it on a parallel box. Um, this one's a bit harder for me to vape. I think this is... No, this is the 3 milligram. It's just a, it's just a very intense vape, so I hope I can get through it. It's been a good vape. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for these for the coil build on this atomizer. I've, I've really been enjoying it. Uh, it's just really nice. Very gracious of you to do that. And uh, I do very much appreciate it, Mike. Thank you so much. Um, additionally, uh, just, uh, you know, shout out. I have vape, Vapor Slam thanks. And I kind of already did the Vapor Slam thanks. But everybody that roasted me, CJ and Andrew from Vapor Trails, uh, Andrew from, uh, you know, Pananal, he does the vape bands, that guy, uh, Flitz, uh, Joe, Freeze did, knocked it out of the park, um, Vapor Joe was a complete douchebag, and Mooch was Mooch, and it was really fun, it was just, it was just fun, it was a fun, fun time, the video of the roast should be, pardon me, <coughs> video of the roast uh, should be somewhere by now. I'm going to try to track it down and try to get you a link. Additionally, I want to give a huge shout out to Mr. Adam Story from the Hub City Shop uh, in North Carolina. Uh, he's a big, he's a giant. He's a Goliath. And uh, he was, he hung out with us the whole time. Just a very, very cool, super cool dude. So shout out to him and his shop. I'll post a link in the description to his shop if you're in the North Carolina area. I would highly suggest going there. It's it's very cool, and he's just a very, very cool guy. Um, do I have any more shout-outs to do? I want, I want to do a quick shout-out to Nicholas. Now, he sent me this uh, He sent me this website that uh, I'm not... Uh, I've never been there before, and I don't know if it's on the up-and-up or if it's legit, but it's imrbatteries.com, and all they sell are batteries. Uh in fact, most of what they sell is for vape stuff. Like they sell ceramic tweezers and wire cutters and a whole mess of batteries. So you can click on here and see uh, 
so they have this Sony VTC4 30 amp battery. I don't know if it's real. <laughs> I don't know if it's an actual Sony VTC5 batteries, but they do sell the MXJO 18650 2500 mAh 35 amp batteries. Um, 750 a pop. Uh, wholesale batteries to the public. Uh, if someone wants to buy some batteries from here, I'd be interested to see if these are actually authentic, you know, uh, MXJO or Panasonic or, you know, IMR, or they have eFest batteries on there too, but they have a lot of batteries and they have uh, wraps so you can uh, silicone skins for your batteries. There's, you know, you can rewrap your batteries. They just have a uh, heat shrink material they do just have like a lot of stuff important stuff they have battery safety it seems pretty cool um i don't know if this is a legit like authentic on the up and up website but of course i'll post i'll post a link in the description to uh to where you can peck that out so we talked about a lot of activism we did some uh vapor slam talk we did some beer tasting at vapor slam and we did some shout outs right now i think i would like to do some first impressions See, the trick is to blow my nose during the times when I'm not uh, filming, like in between, where you see the first impressions graphics. That's when I'm going to blow my nose so you guys don't have to deal with it. So I got a couple first impressions. Uh, I'm going to post a link in the description. So this is just a Hammond box, okay? But it's a dual parallel 18650 with a MOSFET. Yes, I see it in there. Um, box mod, and it's been... Uh, it's been great as it stands. He was handing me this, and I'm kind of like, ugh, another another Hammond box. I mean, where would the vape world be without the Hammond box? We wouldn't have like 80% of our mods. But it is yes, another Hammond box mod. But I was thinking back, and I was like, I do, all of my Hammonds are regulated. I don't have an unregulated Hammond box, and it's got a clicky button, and it's got a bright green exterior. There was a uh, sticker here of uh, Devin, Mr. Ginger Vapes, but it, it got damaged and I ended up, it got it got pe peeled like halfway off and I couldn't stick it back down, so I just took it all the way off. It's no big deal. It's a bright, nice green color. It says chump mods all the way across it. And for the life of me, all I could find for chump mods was a Facebook page. So I'm gonna post a link in the description to the chump mods Facebook page. And they make, they make Hammond boxes. They have some that are regulated, some that are unregulated. And uh, what I really like the most about this is the paint. I like the paint feel on it. It makes it feel a lot less like a Hammond box and more like a regular mod. It doesn't have that Hammond texture. In fact, the, uh, let me get these batteries out here so you can kind of see. The color is all the way through the whole box. Um, they show you how to put the batteries in. There's the MOSFET over there. There's your switch. It uses nice, big, thick gauge wire. Um, I've been rocking this very, very low build on it that Mike made for me. It came into uh, 0 0.09, so it's very, very low. Um, haven't had any issues at all. The button keeps firing. The batteries are great. They don't get warm. Uh, I noticed the other night I was trying to rock a really low build on that tugboat uh, Raptor chip mod that I got at, uh, oh, I haven't even shown you guys that. I got a tugboat Hammond box. It was a Raptor chip uh, at uh, 120 watt Raptor chip at uh, at the SoCal Vape Expo. And I was pushing it way beyond its limits. Uh, the mod itself was getting warm. And so I pulled out the batteries and they were warm. And I felt like where the electronics were and they were warm. And I'm like, all right, that's, <laughs> that's enough of that. This is too low for this device, but clocking in at 0 0.09 ohms this dual coil fuse clapton from mike uh has been has been uh has been pretty spectacular on here <coughs> i apologize i feel like shit trying just to vape uh you know sparingly um but yeah, so that's the Chump Mods. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, Price-wise, I don't think personally I would pay more than like uh, 80 bucks for this. Maybe not even that. I, may pay, I might pay 80 bucks for this. Um, I don't know how much, I don't know what the cost of these is. Um, you have to kind of just follow them on uh, Facebook and see when they're posting stuff. Um, 
What I do like that they do is they don't just use the Hammond box. They customize it by painting it or engraving it in some way, which I think uh, I think looks cool. And that's, I mean, that's if this was just a Hammond box, I would be a lot less stoked on it than I am because I like that it's green. I like that it has a nice, soft green finish on it. I like the button. Uh, I just like it. I like dual 18650 parallel wired MOSFET box mods because you can just build low and it, it's it's great. Um, I'm going to throw the Freak Show Mini on here right now for later so that when we get there, we can get there. But, uh, but yeah, so I got another mech mod that I wanted to talk about that I also picked up at Vapor Slam. I don't have that juice ready. That I also picked up at Vapor Slam. So it is this. So this is the FMJ by Mad Industries and you're thinking, oh yeah, it's another copper tube with an atomizer and a switch. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, it really is. There's a couple really unique things about this. So I got this drip tip for it. It happens to fit on there perfectly. So this is supposed to be for the Kennedy, but it also, fits perfectly on this and I think that just looks cool and this came with a drip tip that looked exactly like this but just in copper and I was vaping it and I'm like blah, blah, blah. I don't want the copper in my mouth I just don't want a copper drip tip I want a Delrin drip tip all day or day I don't want metal in my mouth um, and so I was remembered oh that guy who's I don't remember your name guy if you want to shoot me an email and uh, remind me you were at Vapor Slam, you gave me this little white Delrin drip tip for the Kennedy. Fits perfectly on the FMJ mod um, from Mad Industries. And I'll post a link in the description. I'm going through Kleedex like crazy. And I'll post a link in the description uh, to the Mad Industries website. But that fits in there perfectly. What I really like about this is the button. It feels very weighty. And it's 25 millimeters around and you don't have to use their atomizer. We're gonna to get to that in a second. Can you see the button on here? How it's rounded? It's like concave. That feels incredibly comfortable on your finger. Incredibly comfortable. Feels incredibly comfortable on your finger just to press. There's no locking feature on it. But there is a concave, rounded, oh, it's so rounded and concavey, and it just feels so nice. And you don't have to, you can use, and this is the crazy part that I didn't realize when I first got it, you can use whatever atomizer you want on it. So I pulled the top off, and there was no atomizer there. So I was like, huh, that's really bizarre. But what you can do is any 22 millimeter diameter atomizer you can put on here and you just use their top. It's their top. This is the dot mod Petri atomizer on there. It just sits on there like any atomizer would. Like uh, you could use the tugboat or the Petri or the troll deck or any other 22 millimeter atomizer, but you're gonna be changing the airflow on it substantially to this airflow. And they purposefully made these a little bit smaller so that you could drill them out if you wanted to. The idea being it's easier to just drill them out if you want more airflow than to make bigger holes smaller. So all I did was I put my dot mod atomizer on there. I took that cap off and I put this cap on, line it up with the coils, done. It works the same way and it keeps that same look. So you can rock this FMJ with a number of atomizers and keep this same exact look. It's going to have that like very clean lines, very top and bottom look. It just looks very cool. I'm getting a text. Let's embarrass somebody on uh, in, in public if I can. Oh, okay. And then that's Adam. Okay, well, we're not going to be embarrassing anybody. But yeah, that's the uh, the FMJ from Mad Industries. I'm kind of a fan of it just because I realize it's copper. And I can't smell anything right now. So it, the copper smell doesn't bother me. Um, I like the idea that you can use whatever atomizer you want in here, but you have to use their airflow. There's no adjustable airflow or anything. And the airflow on it is a little bit on the stiff side. It's a lot like the Tugboat V1.
but it works uh, it works great obviously yeah I'll report back with how it performs you know in the real world in my day-to-day -day vaping but uh, so far uh, of everything I got at vape uh, vape er slam <laughs> it's been uh, it's been one of my favorites let me have a sip of water and we'll get to my last first impression Uh, water, 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 and vitamin C. So, so yes, uh, we're going to be talking about this thing next. Now, let me get to my Facebook. Um, diamondbackmods.com. I'll post the link in the description if you're so interested. You must be. Yes, I'm 18 years old. Thank you for asking. A fellow named Jacob, I met up with him at uh, Vapor Slam, and he handed this off to me. Do you see this big box mod right here you're thinking what is that 26650 no this is a triple 18650 positives up negatives down uh number 42 of course number 42 and what's great is the switch the door is magnetic but the magnets are hidden under the 3d printing so he's making this 3d printed and he stops puts the magnets in and then keeps 3d printing over it so the magnets are just seamlessly in there like you can't even see them at all again there's magnets in the door same thing can't even see them at all so when this slides on here it's magnetic and uh it stays on unless you want to slide it off so i'm going to put some uh i'm going to put some batteries in here let's put some batteries in here and it's funny because I actually had to go buy three 18650s while I was at the meet so that I could use this. But I bought three 18650s. They go in there. It feels very substantial. I'm going to close this. You know what? I'm just going to put this freak show on here. I'm going to take it off that box. I'm going to put it on here. And I do need to get the juice for it. I apologize. This vlog is a mess. This vlog is a cluster right now. Cluster vlog. We got some uh, JT and Kruger Dragon Bluez from uh, from their Dragon Mouth Vapor. Um, yeah, so this is a uh, Anarchist wire on there, and this is really really low. I think this came out to one point uh, one one ohms, which is uh, which is very very low. And this is the Freak Show Mini, so you have to paint, but more on that later. And let's put this on here. But uh, but yeah, so three 18650s wired in parallel with each other. And he says, to so the information he gave me, uh, he says the switch is a 50 to 60 amp switch. I go to school at ITT and my professor tested it at different ohms and this stuff and stuff. That's why I didn't put uh, feet in the ratings. What? Uh, okay, that's why I didn't put a FET in it. Oh, a MOSFET in it. Uh, that's why he didn't put a MOSFET in it because the switch itself is rated for 50 or 60 amps. So uh, it was my understanding that switches rated that high as far as amperage goes would be too big to fit inside of a box mod. I don't know. I, I don't build mods and uh, I'm not a switch expert, but... Um, he says that this switch inside is rated for 50 to 60 amps. It looks like a fairly big switch, but uh, you know what? I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell. That's going to be the ultimate test. <coughs> nope. <coughs> I'm not going to be able to vape that. Let's give it one more shot here. Is a very strong blueberry flavored juice. <coughs> of course, my monitor turns off in the middle of my vlog recording. I apologize. There's no, this. This is the worst vlog I've ever done. This is the worst vlog I've ever done. So, we have this giant triple eighteen six fifty three D printed uh, mod. Um, just the way that three D printing works, you can kind of see that it's bent. A little bit right there it's not going to be a perfect square just because of how thick it is and evidently the way 3d printing works this was the bottom like this and it sits on a 
on a warm surface and so it has the tendency to warp so you can kind of see this warp up of course i devalued it by putting a plumes of hazard sticker on there um the only thing i noticed about this device while i was using it the one day uh that i was there was the edges on it are not uh are not smooth or rounded in any capacity they're very sharp flat edges and so when i was holding it i was like uh I couldn't find a comfortable way to hold it. This ended up being the comfortable way to hold it. I couldn't wrap my fingers around it because this and these, it kind of digs in a little bit um, and it's big so you kind of have to grip it. So this way, this is the way I found that I like holding it without having to touch any of those edges. That's the way that I found like holding it. Um, obviously, yes, I will report back in the future with how this holds up. Um, the door is actually pretty nice. It doesn't, it holds on there. And there's no rattling or any sort, but you can give it just a slight little tug and it comes off and it comes down and it stays up. Um, I used this for one full day while I was there. Um, the only brought I, the only mod I brought with me there was that uh, El Castigator mod, uh, and it was really really great. And so uh, I used this for one day, but uh, yeah, like I said, I'll report back. I don't I don't know what the asking price on these is is either, but I will post a link in the description to DiamondbackMods.com uh, where you can. Uh, where you can check out their process and pictures and this, that, and the other on uh, on these mods. And like I said, I don't know what the switch, uh, how the switch is going to hold up, and I don't know what the price of these are. But uh, but yeah, so that's all the first impressions. The FMJ, this big Diamondback mod. I got the Chump Dual Parallel Hammond Box mod. What I want to do before we get to any retro vaping, which there is going to be retro vaping, uh, before I get there, I do want to do a review for the Freak Show Mini. So assuming that I can even freaking vape on this thing, I do want to talk about the Freak Show Mini. So, Freak Show. Freak Show was an RDA. Did a review for it a little bit ago. Wasn't too bad. It wasn't a huge fan, but it was a solidly decent atomizer. This is the Freak Show Mini. It is substantially smaller. That's like Derringer sized. And with this atomizer, it's a very delicate balancing act of juice. Um, if I put too much juice in this, it will it will spit back into my mouth. That time it didn't. But if I put too much juice in here, it will spit back into my mouth. The airflow on it feels exactly like the Freak Show. It's the same size airflow holes. The deck is substantially smaller. So I'm gonna zoom in the camera here. This is the build I have on it. That is a uh, dual anarchist wire, uh, you know, whatever, six wraps on either side. It, it ended up being uh, very, very low ohms, but you can kind of see the same thing with the airflow. Do you see the airflow comes in there and then it comes up underneath your coils just like that. And so you kind of have to tuck your coils in, tuck your, or tuck your wicks in, tuck your wicks in on both sides. One side is substantially darker than the other side. Do you see that happening? I don't know why that's happening. But uh, the deck itself is easy to build on. It uses whatever people call them, grub screws or the Allen screws. You need an Allen wrench or an Allen key to, uh, to build on it, to take it off, to take it on. Um, it's been great. The performance has been fantastic on it. Um, the one big difference is, and why I don't like this as much as the normal Freak Show, is I like the painting technique. I like to paint my coils. Especially with this type of atomizer where you're getting your airflow from the bottom. Just a little bit of paint, a little bit of juice paint, and you're good. You're good to go for at least a couple toots. And on the full-size Freak Show, what you could do was just pop off this top part and paint your coils and pop that back on and you could leave your airflows slots aligned with the airflow holes with the mini you can't do that this top part is one solid piece so in order to paint your coils or to drip you have to you do have to take the whole thing off you have to put your juice on and then you have to reline up your coils 
which to me is obnoxious. That may or may not be a deal breaker for some, but for me, I personally don't like that very much. Performance is great. The flavor is stellar, if not a little spitty. The deck is small, but it's easy to build on. I, I think it's pretty cool. I don't really see the purpose of it, though, because the Freak Show was a decently good atomizer that had good flavor, was easy to build on, and it, it, was, it was better constructed. I like that you can take the top off. You can't take the top off of this. That top cap is all one solid piece. There's no popping it off, so every time you drip, you kind of have to do this number where you realign your coils or you realign you realign your coils you realign your airflow hole slots with the airflow holes um, I've tried using it where I just drip in the top that actually works kind of okay assuming that I put three to four drops in there at a time any more and I end up getting uh, I end up getting flooding out the bottom holes So yeah, that's the Freak Show Mini. Uh, I'll post a link in the description to where you can pick this up. This came to me directly from, uh, this came uh, directly directly from Watofo, Wotofo. I know, a million people are gonna tell me I'm pronouncing that wrong, I don't care, Wotofo. Uh, I believe these are the same price as the full-size Freak Show. Oh, this is the Project Sub Ohm version. I believe these are the same price as the regular Freak Show. Wasn't the regular Freak Show was about 30 bucks? These are about 30 bucks. Um, personally, for my money, I'd probably just go with the, uh, I'd probably just go with the regular Freak Show as opposed to the Mini. The Mini's fine, uh, but it does give me some spit back, and I don't like that the top cap is all one piece, and I have to pull it all the way off to paint and then put it back on. Um, it's fine. It's a fine little atomizer. I mean, I'm not going to rave about it, but I'm also not going to trash it because it's fine. It's a fine little atomizer, and I'm going to be just repeating myself here a little bit. But uh, but yeah, that's the Freak Show Mini. So now that we got that review out of the way, let's do uh, let's try out some retro vaping. So I owe a huge thank you to Mr. Richard. Uh, these are waiting for me in my mailbox when I got home. You see these? These are 14500 batteries. And believe it or not, this is what we used to use. In fact, I have a I had a mod. I believe I still have it. Uh, the Pure Smoker Protege used one of these. That's what it ran on, was one 14500 battery. One single 14500 battery. But what I have to talk about today is a plastic box mod. That's right. And it takes two 14500 batteries. And well, let's, let's not put the batteries in just yet. Let's show you the mod first. So this is the VMU. Do you see this? This has really, truly been put through its paces. Look at that. That display is getting destroyed. Horn style switch. It has an on-off button on the inside. Oh, no, it has an on-off button on the outside. So that's the on-off switch right there. 510 connection protruding from the top plastic backing I put a, uh, a nicotine sticker on there the inside oh it's messy I believe back in the day these were 170 bucks <clears throat> that inside uh, let's just uh, let's try to fully appreciate this that inside is not uh, is not super clean it's a little messy. It's a little rugged looking. It's got two ribbons for your uh, for your batteries right there. Um, this was to turn your display on and off, but the batteries go in. So we're gonna put uh, this one in, positive side up. I'm gonna put this one in, positive side down. Oh, it works. It works and it works. So. That's it. With the batteries, it feels a little bit more substantial, but uh, that's it. 4.5 volts. Now, this went up to 6 volts, I believe, um, and the way that you adjusted it was horrible. You see that little blue? Oh, why are you not focusing? 
See that little blue box right there? Right there? See that little thing right there? That's where you, uh, that's where you adjusted the voltage up and down. So this is a variable voltage device. Do I even have a screwdriver small enough to fit in there? I'm going to end up using my fingernail. So I can turn it up. And it's going to show me 5 volts. I'm going to turn it up even more. And it's going to show me, show me the money, 5.5 .5 volts. I'm going to turn it up even more. It's going to show me 6.1 volts. So that's how you adjusted it. You used your fingernail. I'm going to turn this back down a little bit. 5.8 volts. No, no. We're going to go back down lower than that. So this is uh, without a load as well. <coughs> I wonder if this is even going to work on here. For some reason, I don't feel like this is going to work on here. So once upon a time, uh, like look at this 510 connection. So this is a 306 atomizer. That's the 510 connection I had to deal with. It doesn't stick out very far, so you had to grab like a thumbtack. These would get pushed in over time. They would just get pushed in and pushed in because they were just floating on a little rubber grommet. And so you had to grab a thumbtack or a screwdriver or something and wiggle those out. So I'm going to attempt to attach this. Oh, it works. I don't know the ohms. You know what? I should check the ohms of this atomizer because, again, once upon a time... Why would you ever check the ohms of anything? Let's see if it works. Yep, so this is a 1.7 ohm 306 atomizer. So what I'm going to do, 1.7 ohms, that's way too much voltage for 1.7 ohms. So I'm going to turn this down. Turn this down. And I'm going to need to get some juice in here. So let's just find... Uh, sure. Grim over tobacco. I think I had a tobacco juice in here anyway. One, two, three, four, five. Let's make sure that's wet. All right, so this is the VMU. And I'll post a link uh, in the description to this video, like I always do, to... <coughs> I'm going to have to blow my nose. I'm going to have to blow my nose. Sorry. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for that. Oh my god, that is disgusting. So sorry for that. I'm going to post a link in the description to my original VMU review. I believe this came out in 2011, shortly after Philly Vape Fest. Philly Vape Fest. But uh, I'm going to have a toot on it. Holy crap! clouds bro for days so this is a 306 atomizer and I'm, I'm afraid to take this cover off of it because it's been on there for so long that uh, I'm afraid it's gonna tear the atomizer apart um, this is just a press fit this was what was this thing called oh, shit I can't remember what it was called but it was it acted like a drip tip for the 306 atomizer. So the 306 atomizer had an exposed bridge in there. You gonna be able to see that? Not really. Hasn't had an exposed bridge, and so you needed your drip tip to go around it. Right? And so this this came out, it went meant to go around your 306 to turn it kind of into like a regular more regular-ish looking atomizer and uh, it worked great. The big appeal of this mod to me was it had a great battery life for the time. The two 14500 batteries had a really long milliamp hour. It was well over a thousand which you know going from stick batteries to over a thousand milliamp hours was a huge deal. I also loved that it was plastic. I've always been a fan of box mods. This just goes to show how much of a fan of box mods I am. I like that it was plastic because uh, in the winter time, up when I was living up in Nevada, it would get fucking freezing cold, and I would have to go outside to vape at work, 
and I liked being able to go outside with a plastic box so it wasn't super cold. Like whenever I took a tube mod or something with me, holding it was, it's like holding metal in cold weather. I hated it. And so I liked, I liked this because it was plastic and I liked, I loved that it was variable voltage. Uh, this and a Cardo tank, that's it. I was, I was set. Now I have it dripping with a 306. It's giving me 4.4 volts. That was a dry hit. Wow, that dry hit really takes me back. That dry hit uh, really takes me back. So this is 4.4 .4 volts <coughs> with a 1.6 ohm atomizer. That's 1.6, not 0.16. This is over an ohm. This is this is your sub ohms plus a whole nother ohm on there. 1.6 ohms at 4.4 .4 volts. You can kind of see the display. And all of this had to be mouth to lung. The draw on this 306 atomizer is so tight, so fucking tight, that there's no way you could do a lung hit with it. You just couldn't. Even if you carved it with your other side of your mouth, there's just no way. The draw is so fucking tight, so tight. And I used to love it. I would be like, oh, it's so tight. It's so good. Oh, the throat hit is just killer. And that's juice in my mouth. Blah, 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 blah. Ah. Yep, still getting juice in my mouth. That's what happens. You overdripped and you got juice in your mouth. And so the way to uh, well, there's the yeah, there's too much juice in there. The way to remedy that, is you just get a little paper towel upside down. See all that? All that juice was in there. So I can put my drip tip on now, and I shouldn't get juice in my mouth. you see these epic clouds that are happening? Amazing. And that was it. That's how we vaped and that's how we liked it. Um, these weren't around for very long and I remember I bought this from tttelyquids.com, totally twisted Texas eliquids.com, the creators of the gooseneck, which we're going to talk about the gooseneck uh, hopefully very soon. But I got this from them. Uh, the first one was broken. It didn't work. I had to send it back. And then I got the second one. And then I realized that this was just an O-ring on here around the screen. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they put an O-ring around the screen. It just made it look fancier, I guess. Anyway, the first time I saw this in action, uh, True Love at, I believe it was Philly, came up to me and was like, Nick, bro, you got to go see this. You got to see this mod. This is the next level. This is the next generation. It's amazing. And he just pulled out this little box and I saw those numbers flashing on there and I was just amazed. I was like, I need this in my life. I need this in my life right now. And so whatever, I got one and uh, I vaped it for years and years. This was my go-to tiny little variable voltage box mod. Uh, I want to say this came out in around 2011. 306 atomizer was boss, super boss. But uh, but yeah, so thank you Richard for those stickers. And there was another fella at Vape Bash who gave me two uh, red AW, uh, I'm sorry, E-Fest 14500 batteries, but I don't remember your name, dude. And uh, I apologize because that's my bad, but if you were the person that gave me red 14500 batteries at, 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 at at Vapor Slam, uh, just let me know and I'll give you, I'll obviously, yes, I'll give you full credit. But Richard sent me the blue ones um, and they work. They work fantastic. I might, uh, I, have a, I have a bunch of mods that I can use this in. I'm not sure what we're gonna retro vape next week. Um, in fact, there will not be a vlog next week. I'm just realizing that now. Um, <clears throat> depending on how I feel, I'm gonna try to shoot some reviews and get those up for next week. Next week, I'm headed to Niagara Falls for the ECC VPX event, like I said, along with Ruby Roo and Matt and Vanessa from Suck My Mod. I'm flying out Wednesday. Uh, I'm gonna be there. Am I flying out there Wednesday? Am I flying out there Wednesday, CJ? <laughs> Am I flying out there Wednesday? 
CJ, am I flying out there Wednesday? Just give me a yes or no. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, Wednesday, April 1st. So I'm going to be gone Wednesday, April 1st. The event is the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, and I'm flying home April 5th, and then April 6th is my birthday. So I'm going to be gone for a five so, solid five days. Um, I won't be able to shoot a vlog for next week. Uh, I mean, after. So this vlog is going to go up. T this vlog is going up the 26th. So depending on how I'm feeling, I'm going to try to shoot some reviews on Friday so that I can have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday videos. Wednesday I'll be flying and I won't be able to shoot a vlog. So Thursday, April 1st, there, there will be no vlog. In fact, there may not be a vlog. Uh, shit. 5th, 6th, 7th. Okay, well, there'll be a vlog the 9th. And then we can kind of get back into a normal routine. I just have a whole lot going on. There's a lot of traveling to vape meets going on. Um, I'm going to go back up and visit Nevada for a little bit. Um, there's VaporCon West happening in July. Uh, there's just a lot going on. Uh, I picked up a lot of cool stuff over the last couple weeks. Um, I'll be rolling out some first impressions as well as some uh, reviews. And just keep in mind, you know what? I like it when people hold me accountable. I love being held accountable. I like it when people give me the correct information when I was wrong. That's how you learn things. I'm a huge fan of that. I realized that, yeah, I said Heracles wrong. Not all 150 fucking thousand subscribers, you don't need to point out that I said Heracles wrong. I am not a human, I'm not a perfect, flawless being. I'm not the fifth element, I'm not perfect. I'm just a guy in my office who loves vaping a whole fucking lot. And so sometimes I will get things wrong, Names I will mispronounce, especially. Um, these things just happen. This is part of the Grim Green experience. So that's it's it, that's just a thing that happens. And I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forego any sort of music or viewer mail just because I feel so fucking terrible right now. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. A lot of very cool stuff coming up. I'll be traveling to a lot of vape meets. I'll see you at uh, Vape Bash as well in Chicago in April where we're dropping the first... Three flavors of the Grim Cult Juice line. Very, very excited about those. I finally got, I finally got the final, final bottles. Ooh, and I don't want to ruin it for you. Oh, you see that? Nope. Grim Cult. Oh, no. They look cool. They taste fucking amazing. Really excited about those at Vape Bash, but that's what I got. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support, uh, your continued support. I love you all deeply. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, I'm going to grab the FMJ. Let's keep on vaping.